Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. If you are a Java developer, then you must heard about singleton design pattern and this is one of the common and you can say favorite interview question irrespective of year of experience, isn't it? Now imagine you are a candidate and I ask you to write a singleton class, how would you approach to it? Well, you might write a basic singleton class like this. You will define a class, then you will define the static instance of that particular class, then you will define private constructor so that no one can create object of your my singleton class, then you will define a public static factory method so that from other class you can call this method who will return you the singleton instance. The main purpose of using singleton to create a single instance per JBM, right? That is what the main goal of singleton and that is what we are just doing. And then for thread safety, we are applying the double lock. Then I have just defined a method to access it from outside to validate the singleton flow. This approach looks good, right? But here is the catch. This code can still break the principle of singleton design pattern. Any idea how? For your information, I have already explained singleton design pattern in details before. So I won't repeat it here. You can check the video description for the link. Instead, let's focus on the fun part, how it can be broken and how to fix it. So let me note down different way to break the singleton design pattern. Then we'll discuss solution for each and every approach. Okay. So the first one, you can use the reflection. Then you can serialize and deserialize the object. Then the third one, you can use the clone method to get the duplicate instance. Okay. These are the three different way you can break the singleton design pattern. But to overcome that, manually you need to design your singleton class to prevent from the reflection attack, from the serialize attack or from the clone attack, you need to write some piece of code in your singleton class. For example, to avoid from the reflection, you can just add a null check in your constructor saying that if instance is not null and, and someone is trying to access through the reflection, then it should throw the error. Similarly, to prevent attack from serialize and deserialize, you can override the read result method and can return the same instance. Okay. Similarly, to prevent from the clone, you can override the clone method from the object class and you can throw this particular exception. Okay. So that if someone will clone it, it will say, okay, I'm not supporting the clone with this particular message. Okay. So this is how you can design your singleton class to prevent from different type of attack so that it will behave like a proper singleton class and at any time it will only return a single instance. That is what our main goal, right? So far, we have patched up this issue manually. Like for reflection, we added the prevention logic and for uh, serialize and deserialize, we have added the read result method and we have added the clone method to not support the clone. But what if I told you there is a better way to create a simple and robust singleton class without all this extra effort. That's where enum based singleton approach comes in. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to use an enum to design the best singleton class and also we will prove that it can be broken further by applying the reflection, serialize, deserialize and clone implementation. Okay. All right. So without any further delay, let's get started. So first let's create an enum, just name it singleton, then in enum I will define a variable called instance, okay, this is my variable. Next I will just define a method to just test this singleton enum whether it is giving a single instance or not. So I will do something, just add some dummy sysout just printing the 
hash code. That's all. You no need to write any additional logic to prevent any type of attack. This is what your pure singleton class or simplest way to implement the singleton design pattern. Okay. Now first let's test it. Then we'll try to forcefully break the singleton enum and we'll see the result. Fine. So let me create a test class. Then just create the instance singleton singleton one equal to singleton dot instance. This will get a single instance. Now let me call singleton one dot. What is the method I have defined? Now I'll create another instance. Then just call the method. Now at the end I'll just print the hash code of these two instances. So just add sys out singleton instance one dot hash code. Does it same with the singleton two instance? If yes, then we are getting a single object, right? So let's run it. So here is the result. So we call the method with two different instances. The hash code is same, and even we are getting the result as a true. So when we compare the hash code of both the instances, singleton one and singleton two, we are getting the result as a true. This is correct, right? We are getting the proper behavior of singleton instance. Now let's try breaking it. So you know we can break it using the reflection, serialize, and deserialize, and clone. So first let's try the reflection, and we'll see whether we can able to break this enum based singleton or not. So I'll just create a new class, reflection test. Just define the main method. So let me define the singleton instance. Singleton, singleton one, singleton dot instance. So this is the first singleton instance. Now let's create another instance using reflection. Okay. So to first apply the reflection, you need to attack on the constructor of that class. So to get those details about the constructor, I'll just use the try catch to handle the exception. Now here, what I'll do is singleton class. Give me all the declared constructor. Okay, it will give you the array of constructor. Now you need to iterate each constructor and just allow permission accessible to true. Then what I can do, I'll just iterate the constructor. Then to each constructor, I'll just give set accessible to true. This is the place. Where we are giving permission to the reflection API to access our constructor. Okay, now just try to create the another instance, singleton, singleton two, equal to you can use the constructor dot new instance, right? Now you just need to typecast it. Now try to access the method. Okay, then at the end, since already I created the singleton instance one. I'll try to access that as well. Sys out again not required. Singleton one dot perform. Fine. Now if I'll run these at first place, I'm creating an instance. Then using reflection by giving permission to the constructor accessible, I'm trying to create another instance. So using reflection, we are creating this particular instance. Let's see whether it is allowing us to create or not. Just run it. Can you see the result here? Cannot reflectively create in an object. Okay, so you are getting this particular error message. So even though you will use the reflection, if you design your singleton class using in an, you cannot break it. Okay, so you are done with this particular reflection. Now let's try to break it using the serialize and deserialize. So let's create another class, saying that serialization test. Then just define the main method. Then just write the simple logic to serialize using the output stream and deserialize. Okay, so let me show you. This is the simple statement, guys. Okay, let me add the input statement. So I have just done a simple thing. I create the first instance. Then I just serialize the object. 
can you see here then i am creating the second instance by deserializing the object okay so this is the logic of serialize and deserialize basic core java so i have just added the statement here now what i am trying to validate the instance one which i created and instance two which we created using the deserialize whether the hash code is same or not if you are getting the same hash code then the singleton enum is working as expected we cannot break it using the serialize and deserialize right let me run this if you see the result the hash code for both the instance is same and we are getting true hence it proves we cannot break using the serialize and deserialize now let's try the third approach that is clone okay let's try this now i will create another class now here again just define the main method then this is my first instance now let's create the second instance by cloning the singleton okay so what i can do i'll just use instance 1 dot clone you cannot access the clone method since it is protected in object class okay so there is no chance to break using the clone so just ignore this use case now what is the last thing i just want to show you if you remember in our traditional approach of implementing singleton we have added double locking here can you see here then we have used the synchronized block to just achieve the thread safety if there is a thread context switching happens then it should not create two different instances okay so for that to achieve this kind of thread safety we have used the double locking but in case of enum we don't have such kind of logic here right now let's validate whether this enum based singleton design pattern is thread safety or not so for that what i can do i'll just create another class thread safety test or something like that just define the main method now what we'll do we'll create two or three thread and try to access the method and we'll see whether it is printing the same hash code or not okay so i will use the runnable for that what i can do i will use the lambda now inside this i will create the instance of singleton now just call the method singleton dot perform fine so just define it to the runnable or just assign it to the runnable next i will create three thread okay for now let's create three different thread thread th1 equal to new thread then give okay let's name it task okay give this task and just give the name of the thread let's say th1 similarly let me create two more thread three and then just change the name two and three i am creating three different thread and giving the same task to each thread so that it will print the hash code inside this method right so we should get the same hash code if it is a thread safety so let's start the thread th1 dot start th2 dot start now let's run it can you see here we get the same hash code by three different thread so it means there are only one instance is created and shared across the threads and there are no race conditions or synchronization issue will be occur okay so this is how you can use enum to create simple and robust singleton design pattern and also you no need to take the extra headache to prevent it to attack okay so reflection serialize clone you cannot attack any way to this enum based singleton design pattern okay so this is one of the commonly asked interview question so it's good to have a idea about this design pattern so just give a try and do let me know in a comment section if you have any doubts that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept